Hi everybody, today I want to help you uh, solve your European wasp problem. I want to uh, dispel some myths and I'd also like to help you do it based on some scientific research. I want to go into some details to why this process will work, but using materials you can buy from your local supermarket. So first of all, let's just uh, cover off a few myths and a few dangers that I've seen on YouTube myself. Now, the first myth is that you can find and kill a wasp nest yourself. If you've got wasps coming to you, those wasps are coming from a nest which could be up to 500 metres or 500 yards approximately away. First of all, you're hardly probably not going to find that nest, so don't try to look for it. If you do find it, it'll have a lot of wasps in it. Your average wasp nest can contain at least 3,000 wasps, and you don't want to go anywhere near it. And of course, the other thing is that if you do approach a wasp nest and you try and kill it, and you see videos on this, and they're quite funny on YouTube, is that you're more than likely to get attacked and bitten by the wasps because they are aggressive and they will get you. Um, you can do it at night, in theory, if you know what you're doing, but you don't need to. I'll show you why. Um, that's a completely dangerous thing to do. It's too hard to find and you're just wasting your time and making it dangerous for yourself and those people around you. So don't do that one. So another European wasp myth is that you can trap them like you can trap a fly using something like this. Here's an old fly trap I've got, pretty effective as you can see. And you can buy these from a local hardware store or even the supermarket these days. Why don't these work? Well, because like I said before, how are you going to stop 3,000 wasps? You just can't. You can trap flies because flies come from everywhere. They come from rotting carcasses and those can be anywhere where there's animal feces, for example. So, of course, you can't really uh, control the source of a, of a fly, unlike wasps. So, trapping them will get rid of maybe two or three or four in your barbecue. But what it does is, because you're attracting the wasps to a bait in here, you're using the wasps' instinct to go back to their nest and tell their fellow wasps where the food is. So the ones that come here, smell it and go back, will actually bring more wasps so not only can you not trap them properly in sufficient numbers to do anything about it, but you're attracting them to your barbecue and you're actually making the problem significantly worse. So don't trap the wasps. Waste of time. Okay, so there are about three different types of poisons roughly that are used for killing wasps. Wasps, hard to say. One of them is called Fipronel. It's been around for about 25 years um, and it's the one that we're going to be using. But... There are other treatments. There's one called uh, py oh, pyrethroids. Come from things like chrysanthemums, which have, like to have a pyrethrum. It's the same thing that you can plant a, um, a chrysanthemum and it will uh, get rid of uh, bugs from other plants, for example. It's a natural insecticide. And you can use, and that, that's been suggested as being used. And there's another one which is uh, called a sulfluramide. And the sulfluramides um, are often put in things like uh, ant rids. And those things are also designed to kill uh, ticks, and, ticks and fleas. So coming to some scientific research. So the first one is, there was, a, there was a study done in 2005 around killing dog fleas. And given that the Fipronil, which we're going to use, is actually a dog flea treatment, that's an interesting one to start off with. So in the study, which was done in 2005, they, they compared Fipronil, um, uh, Permethrin, which is a pyrethroid-based uh, poison, and another one called um, imidacloprid. Now, I'll cut to the chase because you can read about this, but the Fipronil in the study was 100% effective at killing the dog fleas within 24 hours. The pyrethrum-based one was 71%, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, 51%, 51%, and the uh, imidacloprid was 73%. So the Fipronil won in the dog flea treatment study in 2005. So that's off to a good start. In 2001, the New Zealand Journal of Zoology looked at comparing Fipronil, our dog flea treatment from the other study, against a comp compound called sulfluramide. And in that study, they had um, some very interesting results. They found that the sulfluramide, uh, over a 300 hectare property, using a single uh, poisoning station, uh, was basically ineffective. In comparison, the Fipronel was 99.7% effective. That's 300 hectares is 740 acres from a single bait. So that gives you an idea of how effective the Fipronel is. So based on those two studies, it's very effective. Now, now the, the other one is that 
Um, in Tasmania, in Australia, the Australian, uh, the, the Wine Tasmania group have been successfully uh, approved to use fipronil uh, to kill wasps um, around vineyards. Now that's a commercially available one. You have to be a member of Wine Tasmania to buy it. And that doesn't help us, but we can do this by beat this by doing uh, using the, the, the dog flea treatment from the supermarket. So that was a very effective um, process. And in, in doing that process, Wine Tasmania gave us some quite good instructions on how to build a baiting station. And also it's the process by which to really effectively kill the wasps. And I'll go through that. And I'll also put a link and you can read this yourself. So I, I'm not making this stuff up myself. I'm using scientific based factual data and studies to help you kill your wasps the first time and the only time. In the next video, I'll talk to you about how we build our uh, wasp baiting station and also how we use our flea treatment based on scientific information to attract and kill uh, a wasp nest completely. So stay tuned.